Tom here from Launch Systems. It's October 11th of 2025, and we're checking out the new open beta of TrueNAS Connect, a cloud dashboard that lets you manage TrueNAS systems without giving some cloud service the keys, since it's using local WebSockets. Curious how that works? I was too, because I'm always a skeptic, as probably many of you are about using cloud services, so I'll be going over how these connections work. But don't worry, this video is not sponsored by TrueNAS, so they are not paying me to say nice things. Right now, though, you'll have to skip ahead about 60 seconds if you don't want to hear a pitch from me. Are you an individual or forward-thinking business seeking expert assistance with network engineering, storage, or virtualization projects? Maybe you're part of an internal IT team that needs to proactively manage, monitor, and secure your technology. We offer comprehensive consulting services tailored to meet your specific requirements. Whether you need fully managed or co-managed IT services, our team is ready to help you. We specialize in supporting businesses that require IT administration or teams seeking an extra layer of support to enhance their operations. Our install team is ready to assist you with all of your structured cabling and Wi-Fi planning needs as well. To learn more about any of our services, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out the Hire Us form, and let us start crafting the perfect IT solution for you. If you want to show some extra love for our channel, check out our swag store with shirts, hats, dust accessories, and more. We also have affiliate links down below that'll get you discounts and deals on products and services we talk about on this channel. With the ad read out of the way, let's get you back to the content that you came here for. Now, the first thing I want to say, this is not True Command rebranded as TrueNAS Connect. True Command is separate from TrueNAS Connect. We're focusing today on TrueNAS Connect because, well, as I said, it's not True Command. It's not the same software. It doesn't work the same way. Now, per the announcement blog post, which I'll leave linked down below, TrueNAS Connect is a streamlined management for your TrueNAS systems. Now, this is cloud delivered but connected through WebSockets. And this was an important thing to me because I don't like allowing control of all my storage where all the things I care about a lot are um, to some cloud service that could potentially be a security threat where it, if someone were to get access, they would, well, potentially nuke all of my data. I didn't like that. And part of my risk model says, no, that's a terrible idea. This is one of the reasons I wasn't a big fan of True Command is while it did give you central control, it also gave you read-write access to all the systems. So you really had to make sure you protected that system because that system had access to all the systems. That isn't how this works. This is very different. Secure by design. We know a key element of TrueNAS's ability to exercise control over your own data. When we designed TrueNAS Connect, it's a hosted software service solution. We knew we had to prioritize security of user data and user accounts. The best way to do it is to not have them. And I'm glad that is the approach they took. They bridge everything to a WebSocket. So you have to have local access to these TrueNASs. I can't go set a TrueNAS up at some remote location and then log into this dashboard and it gives me access to it. Unless the computer I'm sitting at via VPN or whatever means has access to that system, the web interface won't do anything. So it only can access things that you can also access in your browser, you know, by typing in the IP address of that TrueNAS, or if you've got it set up with a DNS entry, you have to have local access or it won't work. So what they're doing is delivering it to your browser, then it creates a series of WebSocket connections. Another thing that's really important is they're using a key ring and key rings allow for credentials to be stored in an encrypted way that they don't have. So the key ring based on the password you choose for the key ring is encrypted. It works very much like a password manager where the only thing TrueNAS is holding on to is an encrypted blob. You have the password to it. It's all done in browser. And that key ring allows you to store the credentials for the other TrueNAS systems, which by the way, if you wanted to do this 100% manually, you can actually bring them all in and log into them individually without the key ring. That would be tedious, but you could do that as well. It'd be just a little less convenient, but I don't mind logging in with the key ring. This is all done browser side and it doesn't matter if the cloud, so to speak, is compromised. It would show them a list of my TrueNAS servers, which I'm going to show you on YouTube anyways, but it would not provide bridging or connectivity because my browser has to have, or any browser that logs into TrueNAS Connect has to have local access or remote over VPN. You have to have direct access to those TrueNAS servers. And please don't publicly expose your TrueNAS servers. Always put them behind a VPN. Keep them on your local network. That's a lot of what made me interested in this is the fact that it's using that as a connection method. I will also be covering how to do installs. This is another feature. So besides the dashboard and the management features we're going to jump into in a moment, it actually has a way you can 
load locally, have it connect once again to your local browser and finish the install without having to go through and plug in essentially a system to it. Uh, it's it's clever how they did this. It makes deploying TrueNAS easier if you don't feel like plugging a monitor in or you have a headless system of some sort. Now it says sign up or sign in. They actually take you to the same page. We'll go ahead and click sign in and you're presented with an OAuth login. You can use Google login or GitHub login, only two ones they support at this time. As I said earlier, this is beta, so I'm sure there'll be more in the future. We're gonna go ahead and use GitHub, and I'm signed in as Lawrence Systems with my GitHub, so we're gonna hit continue. Now, normally it would have prompted me to set up my account, as in fill out your email address, etc. I've already done that, so we skipped that part right there, but I have not done a key ring yet. So let's go ahead and create a key ring. Put in a password, call it TrueNAS Connect Keyring, hit OK. Now we have a keyring that will allow me to store the credentials for the TrueNASs that I joined. Let's show you how to join a TrueNAS. It is required you are running at least 25.10, and we'll go over here and we can click on the TrueNAS Connect, and we hit Get Connected. It'll pop open a new window. What's the name of this one? I call this one Borg Cube. Hit Confirm. Now, because it opened a new window, I'm unlocked in the key ring here, but I'm not unlocked here. For each browser session, because once I said this is all done in browser, it requires unlocking of the key ring in each session. So we'll go ahead and unlock it in this one. I can close this session and it's working on it right now. What working on it means is it's setting up the certificate to get this connected. Then it says, hang tight. We're almost ready because it's going to bring up the connection. But this will not be logged in. So this is what it looks like on the TrueNAS side. It's doing the prepare setup of the certificate, getting it connected. It's getting it connected here, but this is all being done locally through WebSockets. Now it's connected to the TrueNAS Connect dashboard, but it's not logged in. We still have to give credentials. And as I said, it's optional, but I'm going to do this, add this to the key ring. So if I submit, it's now logged into the key ring. And now I have access to this system. Now, if I want to open the TrueNAS web UI, the IP address is 172.16.16.93. I have local access to that IP address. But if we go here and hit open TrueNAS web UI, I'm logged in and you can see with a valid certificate. Let's take a look at that certificate. And we can see it's a Let's Encrypt cert. So it creates a local Let's Encrypt cert with this ID. And that does work without public exposure. So this did not publicly expose your system. This is just a cert that's been put on, but let's go a step further and see what the DNS entry is for this. So what we're gonna do here is do a dig command at Cloudflare's public DNS and see what this entry is. And if we look, we can see it resolves to a local IP address of 172.16.16.93, which of course is the IP here. So there's no public exposure of any of your systems. They're being brought into this particular interface, but not being done in any way, because here's that host name again, and the resolved IP for that host name. It's not being publicly exposed to the cloud, you're not granting any access. So if you were to log into TrueNest Connect with my credentials using my GitHub as I did, you would not be given access to the system. You'd be giving a list of the systems and you would be able to see the local IP addresses, but unless the system that you're on, the wherever you're running that web browser that's logged in, has direct and local access to each one of the TrueNAS systems that's in here, it doesn't get you any further. It doesn't get the credentials. It only gets you the IP list essentially and DNS entries that are resolving to local addresses. So this is why I said it's a little bit of nuance for how they're handling it. So it's bringing all this information in to one place, but it's not doing so in a way that publicly exposes things. And we can go ahead and look inside the browser as well. We look at the WebSocket connection. We look at the URL the WebSocket connection is using. Once again, it's that same local URL. So we don't have any external cloud access. It's just your browser leveraging local access it has to these devices and the connectivity. Now I've logged into my one tied to GitHub that I was demoing and moved over to the one I'm using, which is tied to my Google account. Now I have the key ring locked right now as I wanted to show what it looks like. When you log in and the key ring is not logged in as well, or as I said, it's optional to store them in a key ring, you can log into each individual system. As long as you remember the password to all of them, and please don't tell me you have the same password for all of them, but this allows you to log into each TrueNAS system and will connect them to the dashboard. I've seen way easier is to unlock the key ring 
and any systems that you save those credentials in the key ring are now unlocked with it. And this will allow you to see all of them. Now from here, this is the dashboard. I do want to note that the dashboard is kind of crowded. So if you go to configure, you can turn off the toggle tags and toggle inventory. These just allow you to change things really quickly if you have a lot of them or filter them. I actually like this from a scaling standpoint, if you have a whole lot of systems that you wanna bring into one place and you may wanna filter through them, if you have 25 true NASs, this would be really helpful. But once you've figured out what you wanna see, I like turning it off so I have more dashboard to view. Now for any one of these systems, we can look at the disks and it will bring us via that same, and so I left the URL at the top to show, that same certificate login will bring us right to the disks of this system. Other things though, such if we click on this, brings us to metrics that are being pulled in in real time in via WebSockets to this session. Once again, none of this is actually going over the cloud. It's using your local access. Now I say local access, but I do want to point out that if we go down to this system here that is labeled Trinity, this system is in a completely different subnet because it's across a VPN. So 172.26.11 is not the same as my 172.16.16 local addresses. So as long as the browser that I'm sitting at has access, in this case, via a VPN at a remote site, I can access these other systems and it will work just as it is now. So I say local access, but really it can be bridged over a VPN as well. Now going over here to the applications, you're able to see all the apps running across all the systems. I like this feature quite a bit. You can see the virtual machines on here, applications and containers. I've slowly started testing virtual machines. There's been a lot of changes. Hopefully they stabilize here in 2510 and maybe I'll do a video on that. But the applications have worked really well and getting application statistics, being able to stop or start them and see their statuses all in one across all of your fleet of true NASs, definitely a nice feature. The inventory page focuses on pulling all of your storage inventory into one place. So I've got a lot of hard drives in this one here and quite a few here. I can see the status across my whole fleet again of all the drives and all the systems. And if I wanna go directly to that system, once again, it'll open up a new tab, automatically log me in and I can jump right to the page I want. I really think they just did a nice job of cross-linking things and creating an experience where I have this web view of all my systems, but still able to locally go into any system to drill down. So they didn't have to rebuild every interface. They can keep it relatively simple here. I also think it's novel that you can do an export of your entire inventory. That was a nice little feature because, well, there's a lot of drives across all these systems. But of note, I did choose CSV as the type and it still downloaded a JSON file. Uh, so we'll just add that to the list of current bugs as of the recording of this, it is a beta. I'm sure they know about this or at least they do now if they're watching the video. Now, another feature offered is custom enclosure. So let's choose a system such as my HL8 and we wanna map a generic enclosure. So this is a 45 drives HL8, continue. And I can now set the layout out. So this has eight slots, but they're only in one row. Then we can choose if it's a horizontal or vertical layout. It's vertical like this. And then you can choose the number ordering. So I'm gonna hit continue. Now this part's on you. You are going to have to look at the drives and figure out where they are. So you can map them to each one. I'm assuming they're in this order. And no, I don't have all eight drives filled. I only have these five. So I'll assume that's correct. I'm not going to get up and go look right now, but this then allows you to create. And now we have a map and topology for the VDEVs map where the drives are. So once you take the time to do this once, you're able to save it. Unfortunately, and I know someone will probably have a comment to this, but does this say this to the system itself? No, it does not. So this is viewed in here it is not something that you can view from the system itself. So if we go back to our dashboard, we go to our HL8, we open up their UI, and there's no option here to do the enclosure. That is being stored here in the TrueNAS Connect. That is currently not a feature here. It doesn't show up under storage. It doesn't show up under dashboard. Of note, I do have the TrueNAS Mini R. If we open up that TrueNAS UI for the Mini R, this is a IX systems box slash TrueNAS box. Therefore, it has the enclosure already in there. But something I found interesting, and once again, this can go on the bug notes. 
if we are here at the true NAS Mini R, it would like me to map a generic enclosure, even though this one, well, is supported. Once again, it's beta. I'm sure in the future when you're using the actual TrueNAS devices, they will automatically show up within there. Now, the last piece I want to cover is installing TrueNAS via this. When you click this, install TrueNAS comes up with the download TrueNAS option. It just takes you to the page where you're going to download the latest version, the TrueNAS 25.10 RC1, latest as of October 11th, 2025. And then we hit detect system. Once you've downloaded it, ISO booted it up and I've done all that. So let's hit detect system and see what it does. So please continue the setup in TrueNAS Connect UI. All right. And it's scanning for the system. And as long as the system is on the same local network as this browser is, it's going to look locally and try to find it and go through the setup process. So we'll uh, fast forward so we don't have to wait. This, this does take a couple minutes. Now, kind of a weird note in this window, it pops up with this kind of compressed view. We hit confirm. All right, now it's initialized. Brings us back to this page where we can hit continue, create the password. Apparently it doesn't like one, two, three, four, five, six, so we're gonna have to make it seven, eight. All right, now we got a great password for this. So we're gonna hit continue, choose the disk. I have two drives in this. We'll choose the 80 gig one, review, install the system, and now it's formatting and going through the install process. Check that you've removed the USB and reboot the system. Now that system booted up, let's go ahead and put our super secure one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight password in. We'll go ahead and add this one to the key ring. And there we are. We never had to do anything other than plug a USB in, boot it up on the same local network. As long as it gets an IP, I didn't have to press any other keys outside of telling it to boot from USB on that system. And I can now go into that TrueNAS web UI and finish setting it up. I actually don't have any drives. Well, I think I have one drive attached to it, but I could go through the pull creation with the one other drive that it has, just like any other TrueNAS setup. Now, as we all know, nothing is free. Everything has a cost, especially things in the cloud. There's no bait and switch here. They have a perpetual license that they're going to be offering for this for a single system. And then they have a proposed price right now. I say proposed because it's in beta, but I think this is what they've decided they're going with. And it is in the blog post, $50 per NAS per year. I think that sounds reasonable for consolidated management, but it's not what I think is reasonable. It comes down to what you think is reasonable. So leave some comments down below. Is their pricing something that makes sense to you? Is this something that doesn't make sense? And by the way, as I said earlier, this is an enhancement where you consolidate the view, but you don't have to use it. And even when you are using it, you can easily go back to local interfaces. There's not any lock-in. There's not any gotcha. There's not any, we're going to extort you because once you've signed up for this, it's hard to get your system back out of it. It's just a way to consolidate the view of all your NAS systems. I think it's pretty cool, but really let me know if you think it's cool. Like and subscribe to see more content from the channel. Hit me up in the forums at forums.lawrencesystems.com so we can have a more in-depth discussion about this and other topics. Head over to the TrueNAS forums where you can discuss this. And also be sure to check out the T3 podcast so you can hear right from the developers all the cool things they get going on. I really like that they are doing that podcast. I'm not just saying that because I was a guest on one of the episodes. I'm saying it because I like hearing from Chris and Chris talking about why they do what they do, the decisions that are made, and give you a little bit of behind the scenes and inside information for how TrueNAS is built. So go ahead and check them out. I'll leave that uh, link down below. Thanks.